All right, folks, welcome back. This is going to be a short little review and kind of like an incorporation of several of the things I've taught in the mentorship in 2022 and in 2023 thus far. So we're looking at a weekly chart of E-mini S&P. This is the delivery contract of June 2023. And I took in your attention to this area up here. Uh, it's also been mentioned in the NASDAQ futures contract. Uh, NASDAQ has delivered its respective volume and balance, which is up in here. So this is the area that I believe that ES or E-mini S&P is likely to draw up into. So we have technicals that suggest that we might want to get up there. And I've been talking about that this week in Twitter, mentioning that I favored the run on buy side. And I'm going to tell you why here. Uh, we have a discount, a fair value gap between this candle's high and this candle's low. This little area in here was delivered twice. And we're consolidating with a weekly imbalance seen here with the volume imbalance. And then buy side here if it gets extrapolated. We have Powell speaking on Friday at 10 a.m. So be mindful of that. I believe that's the reason why we're seeing the market, you know, kind of like waiting on bated breath to see what uh, the Fed chair would have to say. So they're going to use that as a smoke screen to move price. Also, we have this down close candle again on the weekly chart. The opening price, we're using that. Why am I using the opening price and not the high of the candle? It's because we have a short, stubby little candle wick. So whenever it's like that in respect to the entirety of its range, I'm going to elect to use the opening price. So we're going to be looking for uh, this weekly candle to expand up, maybe reach up into this high here, and then into the weekly volume and balance. So tomorrow's Thursday, so we'll be looking for Thursday and Friday's action to try to deliver that very thing and repeat pretty much what we've seen in the NASDAQ. Be mindful of this blue shaded area with the order block. These levels are going to transpose into the daily chart. Don't be confused. So here's that weekly order block level here in that shaded area, which is the weekly discount fair value gap. I mentioned those two candles trading as wicks on the weekly chart that's being shown here with the daily candles. I mentioned on Twitter earlier in the week, I gave a short little vignette video talking about how the imbalance here, which is a fair value gap between this candle's high and this candle's low, and that little section of price action is a fair value gap in the form of a buy side imbalance, sell side efficiency. You can see how the market's pretty much been holding inside of that and reaching up into that premium fair value gap. I annotated and showed, and we have relative equal highs back here, which is also residing inside of that weekly volume amount. So that white shaded area, specifically 42.44 even. I like that as a draw. I may not get there this week, but I do believe we're probably going to reach up into this high here um, sometime this week before we close. Whether we stay there and move higher or not, that remains to be seen. But right now I'm just treating that as a draw on liquidity. So these two levels here, the I guess a purplish blue color and the pink, those levels are going to be seen going into the lower time frames. We won't see so much of this anymore after this slide. <laughs> okay. So we have the buy side liquidity pull up here, that daily premium fair value gap, and the daily discount fair value gap, and the weekly discount fair value gap. So it kind of like gives you the ebb and flow of what the market has been doing and why I've been focusing on looking for buy side to be taken. Uh, the buy side I outlined on all these highs here. I mentioned this in a tweet saying that uh, they're, they're not really seeing any runs on liquidity, which means that they're stacking that up. So every time we were going lower, 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 the market's going to utilize this liquidity as a means of offset distribution. So what is it offsetting? Uh, the longs that were accumulated at that low, that low, that low, that low, that low, and that low. And you may be looking at these lines in here, these dashed and then the dotted line here. Uh, what I've done is created the gradient levels of that fair value gap on the daily chart. The midpoint is that dotted red line, and that's consequent encroachment, midpoint. 
and the lower 25% and the upper 25% and then the high and the low respectively of that daily fair value gap. And I'm just going to go up one slide again just to take you back to what I'm looking at. It's this area right in here. So if you do this on your own chart, you'll see what I mean by transposing and watching how the levels are respecting that. Uh, this is not quarters theory, okay? Uh, invariably, because I draw rectangles that teach the idea, uh, people have unfortunately quoted me or misrepresented me in a manner where it would be viewed as a reinvention of supply and demand. Uh, supply and demand is not what I trade. Um, the rectangles are just to highlight an area for you to study on your own charts. Uh, these gradient levels is not quarters theory. Okay, so go and study quarters theory and come back and you'll see that this, this is not what this is. But the algorithm will seek these levels in inefficiencies, which is a fair value gap. And it'll use these levels very precisely. And you can see how the market trades here, 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 here. Look at the bodies here. Okay, and then the market rallies today up into that premium fair value gap on the daily chart and it's consolidating. We might want to come back down just a little bit in here and then I want to see it reprice up into the 4200s. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I want to see. Uh, yes, it's a lot of movement, but you know, we have Fed Chair Powell speaking on Friday and he can bring a lot of dynamite behind market moves. Okay, so they, they like to use his words to uh, perpetuate you know, movement. Taking that away and breaking it down to just where it has been, what's it reacting off of, and what's it likely to go to next, that's what I'm seeing right now. So in my mind for tomorrow and on Friday ahead of uh, PAL chairman discussion, uh, that little fair value gap right there, okay? This candle's low, this candle's high. That's a fair value gap in the form of a SIBI, sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. So the market has only offered downside delivery. So to efficiently rebook and balance that area, the market needs to reprice that. So it should see it as a pass on the upside. So efficient price delivery is a pass above and below or below and above. Okay, so up, down, up, down. That's how you reprice and efficiency. Let's go back into this little area here. You can see that we have a buy side and balance, sell side and efficiency, which is a fair value gap. You can see we're also respecting that and also this gap here. So just be mindful that I'm not going to keep these specifically on my chart going forward in this lecture, but just have it on yours. Okay, so back into this slide here. We're going to go into greater detail in all of this now. Dropping down into a 15 minute time frame, you can see how. The market has respected those gradient levels on that fair value gap. And the way you get this is if you drop a fib and plot it on the high and the low of any fair value gap or a gap of any kind. Highlight the 50%, the 25%, and the 75%. And you can set that on your fib settings. And then whenever you draw a range from high to low or low to high, uh, these levels would come up respectively. Okay, and I'll teach more about this as we go into the summer months, but right now this is enough to accomplish the method. So we have the market dropping down here at the opening bell, and we're going to go into great detail here and really refine that to a level of precision that is also, by me doing this presentation here, this is how I tell all of my students to go back in old data and back test. This is my back testing. It's not using a... Um, Forex tester. It's not using market replay. Okay, that's practicing forward testing before going into live data. It's essential. It has its place, but you need to go back and see and study what price looks like in old price moves and go into the great detail of annotating your charts, which I'm showing you here. So this is an answer to everyone asking, can you show us how to back test, go into the charts and, and annotate and, and journal? This is what I'm showing you here. Each one of these are individual slides that I've created and placed into a PowerPoint. So that way it kind of gives you an idea. I know there's a lot of different ways folks have been journaling, and I'm not going to say one's better than the other because there's so many different variables and options available. So you just do the way you want to do it that is comfortable for you. Okay, so there's lots of applications and apps that you can use. You just do what it is that makes you feel comfortable and go into it as deep and uh, highly detailed as you want. Make it like a therapy, make it like a hobby 
that allows you to go into old data, study the details, how it delivered, what time it delivered. And by doing that and having sample sets of months and years worth of back testing and studying price action like this, your subconscious retains it. Okay. And because you see it so many times, it's like a pseudo experience and you want to annotate on the charts in these little areas where there's empty space. You want to kind of like cheerlead yourself and mention in annotations that you saw these things coming before it happened. And by retaining that and seeing it in price action and your own annotations and journaling, reviewing that on the weekend, your subconscious retains that information as real experience. And it's a positive reinforcement because you're never adding anything to your charts that is negative in nature. You don't want to say any complaints about why you didn't expect this, why you didn't do this correctly. Always cheerlead in your annotations. By doing that, it trains your mind to not be fearful of the moves and also recognize things you've seen in the past because of this procedure and process. All right, dropping down into a five minute chart here, you can see how the market does in fact, but the body's respecting that consequent encouragement, which is the midpoint of the high and the low of the daily discount fair value gap. Now I know right away, this is gonna go right over the heads of the newer students that just came here. I promise when you start doing this and doing it with your own charts, you'll start to see things that repeat over and over again. This is just conceptually showing you how the market respected these levels and to what degree in terms of precision. Dropping down into a three minute chart, which is how I teach my students. We drop down from a 15 minute chart to a five minute chart. And then from five minutes down to one, we refine the time frames until we see our imbalances or the model that we're using. Uh, I've been recently teaching my ICT Silver Bullet set up. There's a Twitter space that I did. I introduced it, uh, I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago or something, close to two months ago, where I outlined it in discussion, like an audio format. There isn't a, there wasn't a video presentation or teaching on my ICT Silver Bullet set up until the video I posted prior to this one here. So whatever video prior to this one, that's the one you can go to and look at and get more detail about this specific time-based algorithmic setup. Uh, the morning session silver bullet here is the only one I'm going to cover here, uh, but in passing you can see it up here. This is the PM session. So we have a, a shift in market structure here. It trades back up into that fair value gap and drops down to attack sell side liquidity there. So for your notes and your study you can use that as your PM session silver bullet. But for here, I mentioned yesterday and the day before that I was interested in seeing higher prices on ES kind of catch up with the NASDAQ and I specifically sent out a tweet with a chart that noted each buy side liquidity pool that I felt that the market would reasonably run up into and engage that buy side. This is a little bit more refined with the details here and using the information I've already talked and talked about you know throughout the week. We have a buy side liquidity pool here. The market drops down at 930. This is a Judas swing. It trades down and clears out this short term low here. And this move here, we're going to look at it in great detail also. But we have a shift in market structure right above this short term swing high right there. Then a fair value gap there. And it occurs between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. We're bullish. We've seen the market drop down. And we trade into a fair value gap. This is a silver bullet long. Does buying it here, using this candle's low, buying it here and running to that high, does it offer 10 handles? Yes, because 4140 to 4130 essentially is 10 handles. And that has yet to meet this high here, which would be above 4144. Or So the criteria, looking at that as a silver bullet, running to that buy side, it offers a range of potential 10 handles. So you can be a buyer there and let, let's see if it gets up there. But you want to take profits at five. And that's how I teach my son Cameron to work with that model. And it does, in fact, offer it. And then watch what happens when it, once it hits the buy side. It comes right back down in and takes out the sell side. So it's offering what? A run on stops. Why would it want to do that? So smart money can accumulate new longs while trailed stop losses get taken out. But what's it trading back down into? That daily discount fair value gap, but more specifically in the upper quadrant, the 75% of that range. Look closer. 
this imbalance here, when it trades up here, traders that think that this is a liquidity void or something to that effect, uh, they think that it's it's done here. It's it's balanced now. It's not. That's not a balanced price range. That's just rebooked and repriced to an inefficiency. That's all it has done. It has not become balanced yet. When the market trades down to the low of that again here and leaves the range, which it does on this candle here, this has now become a balanced price range because price has been delivered to the downside, to the upside, failed to go lower, respected it, and then left the range. So it's acted as a trading range inside of this one micro imbalance on a three-minute chart. This candle's high here is the very candle low right there, precisely. It's not one tick short, not one tick off. It's exactly that price. And I counsel you to look at your own price data, and you'll see that is, in fact, the truth. So when you see that, you can trust that if we start to move higher, then we've probably made the low of the day. And that would be down here. And I'll give you more details as we go. And let's take a closer look at that now. So we're down into a one minute chart here, everything being equal. And that balanced price range, you can see the range between 10 a.m. and 11 o'clock, New York local time always. I want you to take a look at that little area right here on trading view. At the time of watching real time price data, generally you're going to have electronic trading hours highlighted. And it would look like this in your trading view. If you have live data, and you paid for that live feed from TradingView, you can toggle from electronic trading hours to regular trading hours and see more detail. So if you click on that, it's going to change it to an option of regular trading hours or electronic trading hours. If you toggle it to regular trading hours, your chart would show this. Okay, And this is what I teach is the opening range gap. Okay, now I taught this to charter members. I taught this to uh, old ICT mentorship students. And this is not something that has been just introduced because other people have talked about it recently. I've been doing this since 1996. So <laughs> these are things that, you know, they have been there in the marketplace all this time. And while I don't claim to real estate here, you know, as a, a creator of this, it's just this is one gap I like to see used. Now, if you take this gap, and I'll explain what I mean by that, the closing price, the previous session, and where we open at 930, that is the opening range. If there's a gap and we gap higher and we're bullish, this is how you use the information. You expect price to trade down to it, reprice to the gap, and then go higher. Move away from the direction of the gap after it fills. If we are bearish and we see a gap like this, then it could become a trade lower, fill the gap, consolidate, false run, and then break lower. Or if we're in consolidation and we have already met some higher time frame weekly objective and we have a gap higher like that, then what can happen is, is once the gap fills, nothing happens. It just uses this entire gap throughout the day. But because we've been bullish, as I highlighted yesterday, it's a gap higher opening fills and reprices down into that opening range gap low, which is where the session closes on regular trading hours the previous day. You can always find that price by simply just toggling the electronic trading hours to regular trading hours, which is why the RTH is down here. You'll see that separation here. So what's hiding is all the electronic trading from where it traded yesterday at settlement to where we opened at 930 opening bell in New York local time in New York. So that difference there it's going to be sometimes shown as a gap. It could be a gap higher like we see here or a gap lower, or it could be unchanged. We would like to see a gap of some kind because a gap always creates an inefficiency and inefficiencies are many times, not always, many times repriced too. And how we use that information is paramount going forward. What I teach, this is something that's unique to me. This gap, once it's completely repriced, then if we're bullish, we can take that gap and do multiplications of that and project it higher. So if you take that range from the low to the high and you multiply it up, you can get two standard deviations, which essentially gets us real close to the high without even needing that premium fair value gap that's in the pink area. Okay, But look at the respect of that premium fair value gap I've highlighted. I mentioned this again on Twitter beforehand on, in tweets. 
So just go back and look at this stuff I put up. I didn't put very many tweets up this week. Go back and look at them in a little short vignette that I talk about, you know, for imbalances and where you know, everything is, you know, trading and such. And then look at it on your charts. So in terms of my power three, the daily range was shown at the opening at 9.30. It trades down, which is a Judas swing. Traders that are retail traders, they'll chase that move going lower. Because they're not aware of that inefficiency between regular trading hours and how the electronic trading hours are hidden when you look at a chart like this. There was trading, but now we're met with an opening range at 930. So that opening bell, which is all the volatility that initially comes in the marketplace, is usually this type of function where it seeks to reprice to the previous session's close. So we see that here. It drops down, creates the low of the day, and then starts to trade higher. As soon as we meaningfully move above the opening price here on this type of day, which would be really essentially swinging above this, then the market does what? It really starts to run higher for a premium. What premium? The premium fair value gap that's shaded in pink. Watch the beginning of the video. I take your attention from higher time frame down so that way you can keep track of what I'm looking at and how it's salient. So essentially what we're looking at here is my power three concepts, which is the open, manipulation, accumulation of longs, distribution into a premium, and then settle at the day, close. So power three is being shown here. The daily range is a classic ICT buy day. The Judas swing to reprice the opening range gap low, which is down here. Also a daily fair value gap consequent encroachment confluence. That means that the midpoint of that daily Discount fair value gap, which is here, it trades down into that. Additional credit, if you want to go into your new day opening gap, and I did a video presentation about that on this YouTube channel just a few videos back, uh, go watch that, and you'll see how you can use the new day opening gap also as a confluence of this low as well. So many factors of why it went down here. A trader that uses retail logic would not be able to see all these confluences that I'm showing you here. And then a draw to buy side liquidity that was shown in Twitter on May 16th, which was yesterday of 2023. And then the high of the day was booked at the daily premium fair value gap high. And when you have all those details over here, there's your high, there's your low. All these details coming in together, making a beautiful tapestry of how the algorithm itself prices, reprices, redelivers, balances, and then seeks new liquidity. That is essentially what you're doing when you're trading with my concepts. You're, you're seeking what the algorithm is likely to do, move higher or lower. Why should it go higher? For an inefficiency or to take out buy stops. If it's trying to move lower, why is it going down lower? It's going down to trade to an inefficiency or take out sell stops. If it's not going to do either one of those, it's going to consolidate and range bound and frustrate traders, which is what we've been basically seeing for a number of days now and weeks, really, if you want to be you know, dogmatic about it. So there's a, a lot of detail in a, a back testing procedure. Okay. And you go through and you use all these little areas over here and you fill in your observations and you want to kind of like cheerlead yourself and talk about how, look how the market respected this silver bullet, which is a fair value gap on the three-minute chart, but we're watching a, a one-minute chart now. So all those things that was annotated on the three-minute chart was transposed to this one-minute chart. You want to include everything that you see and observe. Everything. And that way you'll have more detail in your journal instead of just showing some charts and maybe a scribble here and a scribble there of useless information. You really want to make this kind of like a meditation. And yes, it takes a lot of time. Yes. It takes a lot of work and, and effort to be organized, to have your charts mean something to you. What you're doing is, is you're, you're writing the most important, useful trading manual that you'll ever read. And you're doing it with your own eyes, your own experience, your own annotations, your own charting, your own snapshots of each individual chart and each individual respective time frame. There's no better trading book or journal or instructional manual on price action than what you're going to be creating by doing this. And that's why it takes time, months. Okay. And the more work and effort you put into it, the better you're going to be at reading price action. This is the secret part of the recipe here. 
Every one of my profitable students did these types of things. They went back and looked at old moves. They studied them. They looked at them and they looked at all the details, what time certain things occurred, what time did it reprice to the high or low of the day, and study that from a higher time frame, sticking with a bias, looking at you know, why should a price move run to a higher low? Why should it move higher? Why should it move lower? And sticking with that narrative and then going through your charts with that mindset and looking at all the opportunities that presented itself over time, you will have a rich tapestry of reading price action in old hindsight moves that is going to be applicable to future price action that you'll watch live. Every technical study, endeavor, doctors, technicians, every one of them, individuals that go to work now with their practice or their profession, they all practiced in case studies that were in hindsight. They were, they were already done. And I mentioned this analogy a lot all the time too. Even surgeons worked on and, and cut on cadavers. So a cadaver is, is a body that's been dead and it's been offered to the Department of Science. So that way people that are training in medicine can do operations, surgeries, and study the anatomy of a dead corpse, just a, a dead person that will never be able to be reanimated. So there is no chance of harm. The worst that already has happened, that person has expired, they're dead. So when you're trading with hindsight, when you're trading with a experience in annotations, you can't lose. It's all upside. But the only real, I guess, downside would be is to not take advantage of doing it and or record negative affirmations in your annotations. Like, I was stupid, I missed this, or I did this or that, and this doesn't work every time when I try, this doesn't you know, pan out the way I want it to. Don't, you don't wanna do that in your annotations. What you're doing is you're cheerleading yourself, and that way when you read your journal entries, they'll be in your own words, you'll be pulling out information that you have found in old price moves, and then you map out each individual day, just like I did. And by doing that every single day, this is the reason why I teach you to have one market or two if it's closely correlated, but nothing more than that because you want to have as much time and energy placed on studying one instrument, one market, one pair if it's Forex, one market if it's a futures contract and dig into that and do really, really rich, detailed study. Because the same things I'm showing you here exists in Forex. It works in Forex. It works in commodities. It works in futures. So it isn't like this only works here and there. All these principles are applicable to every asset. So with that, until I talk to you next time, be safe.